At the heart of Scotland lies a rich tapestry of exciting species and vibrant habitats, home to some of the last remaining UK populations of an iconic mammal, the red squirrel. From the Solway forests of Nofreese and Galloway to the city parks of northeast Scotland, in areas where red squirrels are most under threat, local communities have been coming together to safeguard this special native species for the future. Once widespread throughout the UK, red squirrels have faced a drastic decline since the arrival of the non-native grey squirrel due to introduced competition for food and resources and a new virus brought with them. Since 2017, a partnership project led by the Scottish Wildlife Trust called Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels has been inspiring landowners and volunteers alike to take action. The project consists of a dedicated team of over 25, from data officers to community engagement staff. Working to reduce the spread of the invasive grey squirrel, over half of the team consists of grey squirrel officers, who have a crucial role to play by undertaking vital control and humane dispatch of grey squirrels. At this time, halting the spread of grey squirrels through approved control methods is the only viable option to fully protect Scotland's remaining red squirrel populations. Working across three priority landscapes, each requiring a unique approach to conservation, these far corners of Scotland have already seen reds making a comeback. Today, we begin our journey at the project's most northerly point. Aberdeen's kind of a unique situation within the UK because we have grey squirrels, but they're isolated from the rest of the grey squirrels throughout the United Kingdom. So our population was only introduced in the 1970s, so they've had much less time to spread. The other ones across the UK were introduced in the Victorian times. So the work we do as a project is to restrict the greys to Aberdeen and allow the reds to come back. At the moment, we are setting up our volunteer-led annual spring survey. This is our big survey that we have every year across all areas that the Trust operates. We're in a lovely bit of pine forest on the outskirts of Hazelhead Park, which is just on the outskirts of Aberdeen City. So here we've got red squirrels and a few grey squirrels, but as the grey numbers are going down through our efforts in the project, the red squirrels are coming back and moving into the city. So this is one of our survey boxes that we use for the spring surveys. So in this, we fill it half the way up with peanuts and maize. This is our special squirrel mixture that we use to attract them. And we stick in a wee sticky tab that's for collecting hair samples. So one of these is just a piece of plastic with double-sided sellotape on it. Because you can see light through it when we take it back off, it's the best thing for collecting hair samples because we can put it under the microscope. From this hair sample, we can determine whether we have red squirrels or gray squirrels, or sometimes even pine marten visiting that box. In the North East of Scotland, we've got a committed core group of volunteers and we get new ones every year. We have at least 50 people taking part in our spring survey. Without the work of our volunteers, we wouldn't be able to carry out our spring surveys, so we wouldn't be able to create such accurate distribution maps of both red and grey squirrels. Also in the spirit of the spring survey, we move to the central lowlands where volunteers are meeting in the field. So I'm Mary Ann, I am the Conservation Officer for Argyle Trussex and Stirlingshire and that's essentially from Stirling all the way to Oban and the easier way of thinking of it is the central um, West Lowlands. So our focus in this area is trying to do a lot of um, public engagement and trying to kind of get the word out there. A lot of people don't realise that actually seeing a red squirrel is quite a nice luxury and quite exciting for many of us. I'm from London originally so we don't really get very many red squirrels down there and um, so trying to raise awareness of that, let people celebrate their red squirrels, but also in areas where there is a red and grey squirrel overlap, making sure that they realise the concerns for a start and also that greys can carry a bit of a disease and maybe make sure that they clean all their feeders properly. We're also um, engaging with volunteers, getting all the locals involved and the estates as well, um, just to um, do some feeder box surveys, figuring out where reds and greys are 
as well as um, looking at land management and woodland habitat management too. My name's Catherine and I have been volunteering since November 2017 doing community engagement and I've done two seasons of spring feeder box surveys here and at another site. The estate was involved in the, the government grant scheme where they could track grey squirrels to try and increase the red squirrel population and I wasn't here when that was happening but since I've been here, I think there's only ever been red squirrel hares. There's never been any grey squirrels found. And last year particularly, uh, there was a spike in red squirrel sightings. So growing up in Dumfries and Galloway, uh, there's red squirrels. There was red squirrels everywhere when I was growing up and I was always interested in wildlife and wanted to do it as a job. Um, so I did a lot of volunteering after university and. Uh, moved when I moved over here, sort of got in touch with all the Scottish Wildlife Trust people and all the Saving Scotland Red Squirrel people, and then met Marianne and just wanted to do what I enjoy doing, but actually being able to do it for a charity is really nice rather than just sort of going mammal watching on my own and being able to do it as part of a charity and helping the population is really nice. And we actually get to see them in real life. To the eastern central lowlands, the Tayside team is working to protect red squirrels above the Highland line. See, here in Tayside, you know, we're very much the interface for, for grey squirrels moving north. So we do have red and grey squirrels right across Tayside. And, you know, one of the, the sort of key things that I do as part of my job is to coordinate grey squirrel control. So that includes um, estates that are on forest grant scheme for grey squirrel control, volunteers, um, and also the, the professional grey squirrel officers that, that work with us. Red squirrels uh, like to live in quite low densities. Yeah. So when the problem is when the grey squirrel moves in, after a time, the red squirrels will uh, move out. Um, and, you know, set up territories elsewhere. But we do also have, although there is the competition for resource, um, you know, so competition for food and shelter, there's the added level of the potential threat of squirrel pox virus. Squirrel pox virus is a disease carried by grey squirrels without harm, yet proves fatal for red squirrels, who have no natural immunity. It produces weeping scabs around the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, feet, and genitalia of the red squirrel and becomes highly contagious between reds once contracted. I actually worked on a red squirrel project back in 2006 and 7. I was in Dumfries and Galloway um, and unfortunately was there when we found the first uh, red squirrel with pox and that was 2007. Um, and so, you know, in the time between then and now, 13 years, uh, things have progressed. Um, and so it's really important for people to remain vigilant, to clean feeders, to try and just do what they can. As you said earlier, everybody can do their bit, whether it's report a squirrel, clean feeders, uh, you know, donate some time to the project or, or, you know, if you're really, if you are able and have the time, you know, trapping, trapping grey squirrels is, is really important. Over the years, the south of Scotland has faced a number of squirrel pox cases. But thanks to the support of a network of volunteer-led community groups, Reds have been able to bounce back and overcome these challenges and many more. So I'm uh, Sarah Cooper, I'm the Community Engagement Officer for uh, Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels in the South East. Um, and the main part of my job is um, looking after volunteer networks. Um, these are groups of volunteers from the Esk Valley uh, in the west all the way across uh, to Berwick. So it's quite um, a large area that I cover. Um, and the volunteer groups uh, and networks do all sorts of different things to help red squirrels in their area. Um, for example, I'll help them with raising awareness um, doing squirrel surveys to see what sort of squirrels they've got in their area. 
um, and gray squirrel control, um, any sort of admin tasks. So there's a huge range of things that they do. And I think the most rewarding part of working with the groups um, and networks is um, empowering these local communities um, to look after their local red squirrels. Um, so it's really rewarding to see after all the effort that the groups are putting in, um, where they've not seen red squirrels for such a long time, all of a sudden they're coming back. And that's the sort of aim of our project is to bring red squirrels back into areas and help them flourish. Um, but when you see at a local level, someone's so excited that they've got a red squirrel again in their back garden, it becomes a much more personal thing and, and that's very rewarding. So I started volunteering with the project, I think about 10 years ago when it was in its infancy here. And at the time, I think I was the only volunteer in the sort of people's area. Um, so initially it was a question of putting up some feeder boxes to find out what squirrels were going into the boxes, whether they were gray or red. Uh, and at that time, it was predominantly gray squirrels we were finding. But anecdotally, people were saying they had seen a red here or there. So as the project expanded, um, I became involved in putting down some traps and at that time it was mainly grey squirrels we were catching. But again, we were still getting evidence of reds and then gradually over the years, more and more people have been saying to me, they know what I, I do and what I volunteer for. And they say, oh, I've seen a red in such and such a place. So um, we've concentrated in these areas to establish that there is a red population and it tends to be in here. There's a group of volunteers now in Peebles who are become involved in that, so I'm not a lone voice anymore. There's a good group of volunteers who are now doing these kind of things, which is great to see a lot of new, enthusiastic people involved. So I'm Victoria Channon and I'm the Assistant Conservation Officer in the South West. I would say across the whole of the region, we've had reports that more and more reds are being seen and, and less and less greys. I mean, there's fantastic work going on across the board, but uh, in Moffat, um, we're getting sightings of reds actually in the town now, which is amazing um, because they've not been seen there for some years. So it means that the work that's being done there is having a real impact um, and allowing red squirrels to come in closer. We have done a lot of trapping in the area around here. Uh, round about Moffat and, and uh, have caught a lot of grey squirrels and we are delighted to say that starting really in the, in the autumn of last year we started getting reports of people seeing red squirrels in their gardens on the bird feeders again and it has just kept on going. We've used cameras mainly where we have a feed up we've got some excellent video in this area in fact one of these trees around me of reds and greys it's amazing what you can pick up on them from sunny Moffat to rainy Kirkubri our final journey takes us to a classroom and wildlife hide that has made its mark on red squirrels and the local community. It was built in 2018, which included making a, a classroom for the children to do forest schools and things like that, and general education about the natural environment. We also decided to build this hide uh, so we could bring children in particular up here to see the, the squirrels. Since the hide has been opened, it's been amazing the amount of people that have come here. What we've found uh, since we started feeding, particularly in the early summer, we've improved the percentage of survival quite dramatically. And what this has led to is the red squirrels fanning out from the Bar Hill woods and they're now appearing in places where they've never been seen before or in other places where they haven't been seen in over 40 years. So it's making a huge difference to the population of red squirrels in the area. I have two grandchildren and bring, bringing them up here uh, is really special. 
Sophie, one of the grandchildren, loves it here. One of her first words was squirrel, which made me very proud. <laughs> Two primary schools come up here to use the hide and seeing the kids out in the woods and enjoying the woods and enjoying the squirrels, is, it really makes it all worthwhile.